back after Christmas and New Year's. I'm really excited because not only this is the start of a brand new month, but it is also the start of a brand new year. Usually at the beginning of a new year, people like to talk about all the plans they have. Indeed, many people like to prepare their new year's resolution. Do you make plans to change your life for the better? What is your greatest plan? While you set your goals, do you set any rules too? Why? Why do we have rules? Because rules help a person to follow through and that there is accountability to be responsible for the outcome. You know how when you are playing a board game, there are rules you have to follow? Well, in the same way, there are rules for living. And we have rules that we are to follow at school, at home, and at church. Did you know that God set up rules for His people to follow to? He did. As we read in the Old Testament, God gave His people rules to keep them safe and to help them. In fact, the Jewish people had 613 different laws to follow. 613. Plus, they made even more rules to try to keep from breaking any of those 613 laws. Rules for living can help us live the way God wants us to live. We can show how much we trust God by the way we live every day. We can choose to live with responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trust with what is expected of you. What will be your greatest responsibility of all time? Well, that's a big question, right? Think carefully and don't answer just yet. If we pause to think about it, the responsibilities surrounding our lives are endless. Most likely, each of us have a list of items each day that we are responsible for. We make our bed, set the table, feed the dog, finish our homework, and the list just goes on and on and on. The truth is that no matter what they are, following through on our responsibilities is important. But which ones should get most of our attention? Which is the greatest responsibility of them all? This could be debated all day. Maybe your mom would say keeping your room clean and tidy is your greatest responsibility. While your friends would say offering a word of encouragement to them on a bad day. We will all have a different opinion. But did you know that Jesus has something to say about this subject? Let's dive into the Bible to explore this subject together. As many of you know, the Bible is divided into two large sections called the Old Testament and the New Testament. Within the two sessions are a total of 66 books of the Bible. The first four books of the New Testament, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, are called the Four Gospels. They are special because each book tells the story of Jesus, but each one was written by a different author with a unique perspective. Today, we're diving into the book of Matthew, which was written by a tax collector named Matthew. His life completely changed when he decided to follow Jesus. Years after his travels with Jesus, he wrote an eyewitness account of what Jesus said and did while he was on earth. Today, our true Bible story is from Matthew chapter 22, where Jesus tells us all about the greatest. Everyone is part of a bigger story. 
It's a bigger story than you can imagine. It's a big story about a really big God. Discover the story that shows you the character of God. Hey yo, <laughs> I'm Caleb and I get to take you on a little tour of my Bible. <laughs> yep, you're looking at God's word right here. 66 individual books written down by people throughout history who listened to and followed God. He gave them the amazing job of sharing his words with others, including us. And because these writers were faithful, we have a record of God's amazing love for us, how he created us and made a way to rescue us, even when we turned our backs on him. And God's trusted each of us with work to do too. That means we've got to take responsibility. And I have five stories right here to show you what it can look like. We start off in the book of Matthew. And here, Jesus shares the most important part of your job description as a human being. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Wanna be the best you God created you to be? Then love God, love others. It's not always easy, but it really is that simple. Let's move ahead a couple books to Luke. Two brothers are arguing over who gets their family stuff. So Jesus tells a story. There's this rich rancher whose crops do so well, he has no place to put the harvest. So instead of sharing it, he builds brand new warehouses to hoard it all for himself. Then he lives happily ever after, right? Not quite. Time for a hop back to the Old Testament and the book of Proverbs. Here we go. In chapter six, we find a proverb or a wise saying about the value of hard work. You people who don't want to work, think about the ant. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander. It has no leader or ruler, but it stores up its food in summer. It gathers its food at harvest time. I mean, if an itty bitty little ant can take initiative to gather its food for the whole winter, then you can probably clean your room without three reminders. <laughs> Back to the book of Matthew for another story from Jesus. Here, Jesus tells the tale of three servants whose boss goes on a long trip. The boss leaves each servant some of his money to take care of. But while the first two go all out to use that money and make more cash, the third one's got a different plan. It involves a shovel and a hole in the ground. And we're not talking about searching for pirate gold. Let's wrap up in one of Paul's letters, Ephesians. Paul tells the believers at the church in Ephesus Don't let any evil talk come out of your mouths. Say only what will help to build others up and meet their needs. Then what you say will help those who listen. You may not have a lot of money or stuff, but you do have words. And you can choose your words to make someone's day in a really big way. God's given us so much. Maybe it's our families and friends or our stuff, our time and our words, and he expects us to use them wisely with his help. That's a big responsibility. And I can't wait to see how it plays out in you and me. You need
Never turn away, you never leave my side And every time I call your name out just to find That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start No matter what I'm facing I will trust you with my heart Trust you with my heart There are days when I feel I need a friend And then I hear your voice reminding me again That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start Trust you with my heart You are more than able To lead me through the dark Your love is never failing I will trust you with my heart Whoa, whoa I will trust you with my heart No matter what may come No matter what I go through God, you are Never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart no matter what may come, no matter what I go through, God, you are Never gonna fail me, I will trust you with my heart You are always faithful, you love me from the start No matter what I'm facing, I will trust you with my heart You are more than able to lead me through the dark Your love is never failing, I will trust you with my heart you with my heart. Hey everybody, my name's Erica. And if you're like me, you love playing games. I love sitting around a table with my friends and family playing card games, board games, or any kind of game. I just got a new game in the mail today. Duga Pioneers! But I'll have to wait just a little bit because if you're also like me, you can't play a game until you know how. I feel like I owe it to the designers of this game to learn all the rules so I can play the game the way it's designed to be played. It's my responsibility. Responsibility is showing you can be trusted with what is expected of you. So let's check out these rules. The Doja Duga Doge Doge Doja Pioneers Instruction Manual. Rule number one. Each player should roll the enclosed red die to determine who goes first. The person who rolls the highest odd number should be the first player to begin the adventure. The person who rolls the lowest even number should draw a standard utility card. If the card is beige, they should go second. If the card is fuchsia, they should go last. If the card is orange or gold, all dice rolls are null and void and the process should be repeated from the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. Rule number 127. Should you run out of standard utility cards or action cards, you must pause the game until more cards are ordered and cards can be purchased from the website listed below. Expected delivery can be eight to 10 business days. Oh, this is exhausting. I mean, I get it. We need a lot of rules. Rules are important in the games and in life. But we'll learn in today's story. Maybe the rules don't have to be so complicated. Let me just pull this 
back to where it... Oh, excuse me. Sorry. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. The book of Matthew, the very first book in the New Testament, was written by, you guessed it, Matthew. Now, even though he was a tax collector and disliked by others, he became one of Jesus' followers. And years later, he wrote an eyewitness account of the things that Jesus said and did. For example, he tells us of the day that the religious leaders tried to trap Jesus with a trick question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law? The religious leaders followed 613 different laws. They wanted Jesus to pick just one law so Jesus would get in trouble for leaving out the other 612 laws. But Jesus didn't fall into their trap. Instead, he took this opportunity to show everyone that following God doesn't have to be complicated. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Now, Jesus wasn't saying that the other 611 laws were wrong. He was only saying that if you look at every choice in your life through the lens of loving God and loving others, you won't go wrong. If you love God and love people, you will fulfill all the other laws. It's truly that simple. Often, it's in our darkest times that we find the most amazing opportunities to show love to others. In the past year, due to COVID-19, we've seen a lot of people put themselves on the line to help others. Doctors, nurses, medical workers, but we've also seen grocery store cashiers and delivery workers put themselves at risk of getting sick. So each of us could have the food and supplies we need. That's love in a big way. And you know what? Young people and kids have stepped up too. In Reno, Nevada, a college student named Jade Powell recruited a few friends to help elderly people buy their groceries during the pandemic. Within a few days, the idea took off. More and more volunteers jumped in to help shop and drop off groceries on the doorstep of older individuals. Within weeks, shopping angels reached all 50 states and other countries too, all because one student saw a need and chose to stop and show God's love. Sometimes showing love to others only takes a few minutes. In Columbus, Ohio, Taryn, who is nine, and Calliope, who's six, knew their elderly neighbor loved classical music. Because she was in isolation and couldn't go out, they took a concert to her front porch. For 30 minutes, they played a private cello concert just to brighten her day. It was a simple and amazing way to show love to others. Let's look at one more story. In Portland, Oregon, a high school junior named Julia Lynn quickly realized that with school closed, some kids and families would not be able to get enough to eat. She put out the word online in her community, requesting food donations. Within days, she received over 400 responses. Julia picked up each donation herself, and with the help of the school student government, she set up distribution centers where families in need could pick up the food. In helping provide food to hungry people, Julia was clearly showing God's love in action. God loves us so deeply. He's done so much for us, it's our responsibility to take that same love and show it to others. As Paul reminds us in the book of 1 Timothy, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and in how you live. Also, set an example in how you love in what you believe. Don't wait for somebody else to go first. Now is your time. Now is your chance to love God by loving others. Hi, have you ever noticed how many rules there are in life? Look both ways before crossing the street. Hey, you, look both ways before crossing the street. No talking in class. No talking in class. Children, no talk. You can't say something nice. Don't say anything at all. If you can't say anything nice, don't 
say anything at all. When you read the Bible, you'll see even more. There are hundreds of rules and commandments from God in here. And learning all of them would be really complicated, even if you studied them your whole life. But here's the good news. It doesn't have to be so complicated. Jesus said that all God's commandments, all of his rules are based on just two. Rule number one, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God, love others. It's so simple. When you follow that rule, all the other rules are taken care of. After all, you're not always gonna have the rule book with you. So when you're in a situation where you're not sure what the rules are, just ask yourself, how can I love God through this? Or am I loving other people? That should help keep you in the game. So here's the one thing to remember today. This is the most important rule for life. Love God, love others. Because really, it's more than just a game. If you follow Jesus, then loving God and loving others is your responsibility but it's up to you. You can make it complicated or just keep it simple. Mmm. Yummy. Eatsy, eatsy, eatsy. <laughs> See you next time. Jesus said this to his disciples. Here is my command, love one another just as I have loved you. It was Jesus who showed us the perfect example of what it means to love God and others. If we want to follow Jesus, we have a responsibility to love God and love others. All of this might make you wonder, what does it mean to love God? How are we supposed to love God? a God who offers His love to us unconditionally. How do you express love to God who is all-powerful? A big way we can show love to God is by loving the people He created. Jesus has shown His love to us and now we get to share and show that same love with other people. Showing love is more than a feeling. It's taking action. Giving away a pencil to your best friend when he or she needs one, it's not a problem. Hugging your grandma after she had a bad day is a no-brainer. But loving others goes beyond close friends and family. What does it look like to love perfect strangers? Is it easy to love others who look different than you? Are you willing to offer love to those who speak a different language? Often, it's in our darkest and most uncomfortable moments that we find the most amazing opportunities to show love to others. Some of you may be thinking, I want to help others someday. Don't wait. We do not need to wait until we're in high school or until you can drive or until when you're an adult to show God's love to others. We don't need to wait for someone else to go first. We can make a difference today. In fact, Timothy once wrote in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Set an example for the believers in what you say and in what you live. And also set an example in how you love and in what you believe. Show the believers how to be pure. In other words, the time to show God's love to others is now. If you want to love others but are unsure how, Ask God to help you show love to the people around you. When they see how you love them, they can see how God loves them too. This isn't always easy, 
So let's take time to pray and ask God to help us as we try to love others the way God loves us. Let us pray. Dear God, you are the perfect example of love. Thank you for giving us the perfect example of love. You love us so much that you sent Jesus to be our Savior. And Jesus showed us what it means to love others, to treat others with love and kindness. Thank you for making it so simple and so clear. That's what's most important, is the way we show love. We are so thankful for the great responsibility you give us to love. You put your people and things around us every day and trust us to take care of them. Please help us see the many opportunities we have to love God and to love others. Help us stand up and say yes to the chance to care for others and create a ripple effect of love in the world around us. Help us to follow you well this week by growing in our love for you and choosing to love others as much as we love ourselves. Please help us show how much we love you by the way we love the people around us. Thank you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As follower of Jesus, we have a responsibility to love God by loving others. That's what Jesus said is the most important thing. That means it's about more than just following the rules. We don't have to wait for someone to tell us to do something. We can decide for ourselves. We can choose to show love by being helpful and kind and treating others the way we want to be treated. Love God, love others. Who are the people you could show God's love to? By being helpful and kind to a person, you will point that person to God through the love you show them. Don't wait for another opportunity or for another person to show love to you first. You can make the first move this week. Have a wonderful week showing God's love to one another. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye now.